For almost a century, the first Texas Council of Campfire has been lighting the way for young people. In 1914, the first telephone link was made between New York and San Francisco. The first cargo ship sailed through the Panama Canal. The First World War began in Europe, and the first Texas Council of Campfire was established. Dr. Luther Gulick and his wife Charlotte had started Campfire Girls only four years before to give girls a chance to do the fun things boys did as part of an organization like the Boy Scouts. The Gulicks loved the outdoors, so they chose Native American names and symbols because of that culture's close ties with nature. The Campfire Girls grew quickly and became so popular that in the 1920s they even had their own adventure book series. In Fort Worth, they were already giving service to the community. We'd served at, uh, oh I remember we would have a, whenever we had the stock show, we always had a great, a great area that they'd put a carpet down and baby beds and we would keep do a little, have a little nursery there for people that wanted to leave their children with us. I wanted to say this, that when I went to camp, we went out on Lake Worth to Camp Civitan. I remember there were a few girls that were brave enough to what we said was, were initiated into the Polar Bears Club because they, we were out there and because we swam in the summer there, then they thought they had to swim at Thanksgiving time. <laughs> and there were two or three of them brave enough to do it. <laughs> A real milestone occurred in 1934, during the Great Depression, when the council purchased 90 acres on the Brazos River near Granbury. This camp was appropriately named El Tesoro, the treasure. Well, my father was Clarence Craft, who was county judge at one time. Uh, he helped to start campfire in Fort Worth. And my father always said, El Tesoro was the hottest place in the world, <laughs> and he always said, the fathers helped us drag all our stuff. We were great at bringing too much stuff to camp. So, <laughs> our famous donkey was <laughs> Eeyore, you know. People are just now getting acquainted with Pooh. <laughs> well, Pooh-wee, it was, <laughs> we, were, we were into Pooh a long time ago, and Eeyore was our favorite donkey. And we just go right catch here. Eeyore and ride it through the campgrounds, you know, <laughs> catch it by the ears and get on and ride. <laughs> we slept, when we went on camping trips, we didn't sleep on the ground. We slept in hammocks, and mm -hmm. we'd been given a diagram before we left and you know, how to make them. We just make them out of canvas and broomstick handles and rope and tie them between two trees. It now it took uh, <laughs> took some learning and some experience to be able to get into the hammock without falling out the other side. <laughs> and, and and some of them, you know, the hammock hung like this. You're supposed to hang it so it's nice and straight. Well, uh, one of the favorite things I did was going down to the creek digging a hole and putting coals in there and we'd bake potatoes. When I got married, I told my husband, I said, now this is the only way I know to cook potatoes, I have to go to El Saro. <laughs> <laughs> well, in fact, when we, when we were ACs, Catherine, we built the bridge. We, tired, we got tired going down the ravine and back up again. So we thought, oh, let's put a bridge on that. <laughs> so we did. Long before the women's movement, Campfire girls came to be seen as independent and strong women. They met with celebrities and national leaders like Amelia Earhart and Eleanor Roosevelt. And when the world went to war, our girls were right there selling war bonds for our boys overseas. In Fort Worth, members of the Okizu Group presented the National Campfire Director with war bonds to help buy an ambulance plane. This deep sense of honor and patriotism that permeated the war era has always been a part of Campfire. Every day we had uh, the flag raising first thing in the morning. Uh, before breakfast we had our flag raising. And I think Campfire develops uh, attitudes towards your, your fellow man and, and what can you do for him, not what they can do for you. In 1947, before the Civil Rights Movement, there was such a strong interest in campfire among the black community that the Tejas District was formed. With more than 200 African American girls as members, it represented a quarter of the overall campfire membership in Fort Worth. The Community Chest, now United Way of Metropolitan Tarrant County, increased funding to campfire in 1949 to support the activities of this group 
and strong membership continued throughout the 50s. Campfire gave me a chance to do a lot of the things I don't think I would have ordinarily done. And we would meet at the Grand Theater on Fabian Street. And that was when we received our honors and things that we had earned. Oh, my sister made my uniform because I was unable to purchase all of the parts of the uniform that the girls wore back then. And even to the emblem of the campfire log and flame on the hat, she embroidered. The role models and expectations of women changed drastically from the June Cleaver image of the 1950s to the women's lib activists of the late 1960s. Meanwhile, Campfire began to foster its second and even third generation of girls growing up in the program. Since Mom had been in Campfire, she started a group, and we were bluebirds, and we stayed together. I guess Mom was our leader all the way through grade school, junior high, and then we went to high school, and she was still our leader, and we stayed in through high school. We lost quite a few, but we picked up a few others and added to the group that had been Campfire Girls on the other side of town. I don't know. Everything, I guess, is tied into El Tesoro, and Allison inherited it. Last Thursday night, when I finally became a counselor, <laughs> my CIT graduation, it's definitely a good memory. <laughs> what about your medallion you found here? Oh, when I'm working on my Wohilo medallion. Those are still memories in the making. Yeah. <laughs> Louisa Hahn became executive director in 1958, and she guided the First Texas Council for the next 20 years. In 1965, Mrs. Hahn tackled the job of taking 24 Horizon Campfire Girls on a tour of Europe. The trip to Europe was really a, a test of, of management and, and everything, and I had lots of help and lots of volunteer help. And Bass was one of the girls, and her mother went along. During her term, the offices moved to West Rosedale, and El Tesoro continued to expand. And they still had the little benches and, ch and tables that uh, Roosevelt had the boys in the WPA made for us. And they're, they're signed. And, this in the dining room, but it has been a part of, a big part of the campfire program for m most of the years that it's been here. In 1978, a new lodge was dedicated to Mrs. Hahn for her 20 years of service with the council. I want them to have every opportunity they can to, to get camperships, either earn part of it or, or get, or be as given part of it, or all of it. I wish everybody, I really wish they didn't have to pay, but it's very expensive now. I want to thank everybody who participates because some children simply cannot go un without help. And this way, there should be enough money in Fort Worth for us to send lots of children to camp. The 1970s brought a new era to campfire, both nationally and locally. In 1975, as family structures changed and young people began to experience greater social pressures, National Campfire made the decision to become a co-ed organization. What? You thought Campfire was only for girls? Vern, where have you been? I was at a club, and then my mother was the leader. And Kevin, you were in the club. Right? Yeah, I was with uh, the Blue Jays, uh, Stormy Thomas's group. And as, as a little boy, you don't really think about the girls, obviously. You're thinking more about having fun and, and building campfires and, and meeting with other guys and, you know, that camaraderie between other fellows. The addition of boys allowed entire families to participate more fully in campfire activities, including El Tesoro camping. Campfire and camp were always something that our family did together. El Tesoro was a habit, and it was a great habit. 
I was the only male counselor that uh, graduated from the CIT program, the counselor and training program, uh, in 1988. As a brother and sister, quote, combination, um, now I look back and I feel like that it, it was definitely something I needed and, and, I, and we needed for each other. Uh, one of the things that made me more proud and, and most proud was the night that I was able to tie her tie for the CIT counselor and training graduation. So we totally grew up together in Campfire. Um, it was a very family oriented organization, which a lot of others are, but not, they're not all co-ed and I think it's very unique that way. Both my mother and my father were included in my club program and it kept that together and that family centeredness that I got from Campfire rolled over and into my daily life and keeping it made it easier for me to feel like I was a part of something that I didn't have to go. I didn't feel the peer pressure to be part of a group because I already was. Zem Neal took the helm as executive director in 1978. And in 1983, the council relocated its offices to the current headquarters in the Mercantile Center of Fort Worth. During this period, Campfire created response programs, so named because they were in response to a variety of societal issues like latchkey children, youth crime, drug use, and violence. Diamond Hill Youth Center houses Campfire's first after-school program and serves children in the first through fifth grades. It also offers programs for teens and their parents as well. Another new program called Special Sitters was developed in the 1980s. Special Sitters, teens trained to sit with children who have special needs, fill a need in the community for parents looking for someone with the skills to look after their special child. I think the Special Sitters program has given some teens the opportunity to see that people with special needs can continue to participate in regular, ordinary um, activities. Campfire teaches me to work as a team and it's taught me that uh, not only do we need to strive in in academics and sports, but we also need to strive in community help and Special Sitters has taught me that people are different because that's the way God made them and we need to give them just as much right as anyone else. I chose to do Special Sitters because I, I wanted to help people. It just makes me feel good inside. By 1995, the council services to underserved populations had grown so much, community services and outreach became its own division within the council structure, and now mentors other campfire councils striving to extend their reach. Camp El Tesoro also began to integrate special needs campers, at-risk youth, and developed a unique week-long grief camp for children who have lost loved ones. El Tesoro de la Vida, the treasure of life. This extraordinary camp helps children realize that they are not alone in their grief and that it's all right to just be a child and have fun. Campfires is, is, is for everybody, not for one single person, not for one group of people, but for everybody. In the early 1990s, campfire leaders identified a trend in society that is affecting millions of children and families. Recognizing that a growing number of young children were being cared for outside their homes, the Campaign for Children was launched. This capital campaign raised $4 million to expand the Campfire Resource Center, build the Community Lab School for family-centered child care, and add work family programs and services. Through these programs, Campfire has raised community awareness about the impact of quality child care and has trained thousands of child care providers. The child care issues would definitely be impacting the campfire as an institution simply for the fact that the majority of children are in a child care situation of some sort. Here in Texas, the last statistics I heard were somewhere over 60%. So whether or not they're able to attend a campfire camp or a boys and girls club, chances are they are in a child care setting somewhere. So they would be greatly enhanced to be able to benefit from whatever training their, their providers may have received. The formative years of childhood are the first five years. I mean, those are the most important years of anything, and they shape a child's life and who they are. 
and for Campfire to recognize that and reach out to those younger children and not just start with the club program at five or six is fantastic. I feel that Campfire really is especially attentive to children's issues. It amazes me constantly that when I recognize a problem, I will turn to my newsletter and they've already addressed it. There's a training or a survey or something that addresses that need. I feel they are very on target and on top of situations that affect children because they do change frequently in the society we have today. And also they're, they're a resource, a major resource for parents, providers, even the business people. They need child care or have child care issues better to ask than Campfire. Since its beginning, Campfire has been nurturing the positive energy of America's youth and has constantly moved towards meeting their changing needs. The programs have expanded, but Campfire's goals for girls and boys are unchanged, sparking creativity and imagination, stimulating new interests and knowledge, strengthening each child's place in the family and community, and understanding and appreciating the world and the people around them. The campfire is more encompassing of everything that is part of life. It, it teaches you more of a life skill as opposed to just one skill. If I could use just one word for campfire, it would be outdoors. Advocacy. Everything's fun. The close relations that we develop. Cutting edge. Exciting. Leadership. Super. Action. Confidence. I think friendship. Giving. Just living by the law itself, I never forget what that law really says. Worship God, seek beauty, give service, and knowledge pursue. Be trustworthy ever in all that you do. Hold fast on to health and your work glorify, and you will be happy says the law of campfire.